Okay, we're back today and we're taking a look at 2D vectors. So to create a 2D vector, you're going to make a vector with a vector of ints inside of it. Okay, so we're going to call this variable v1. And by the way, just to let you know, we need a space right there, if you can see between those two greater than symbols. If we don't, then the compiler will think that it's the insertion operator. So in this specific case, case uh, white space matters. So we're going to go into a loop. And we're, notice we're creating this uh, vector without anything inside of it. And we're going to go into a loop. And the first thing we're going to go into the loop, we're actually going to make a vector of ints. And we're going to call this one v2. So these are the smaller vectors within the big vector. And then we can take a number, doesn't matter, we're just doing plus plus c here, right, which increments first and then assigns. And we're going to push that back into v2. Now when this loop is finished, OK, so we've got four things in here. When it's finished, we're going to push back v2 into v1. So notice v2 is a vector of ints, and we're going to push that back into v1. And v1 is a vector of a vector of ints. That's what, it, that's what v1 holds. It, v1 holds vectors. So it's a vector that holds vectors. And after we're done, then we can do a, like a nested for loop in order to print out what's inside of the vector. Or the, I like to call two-dimensional vectors, I like to call them uh, like a matrix. Okay? But it's ba essentially, it's a 2D vector. So notice here, though, that when I iterate over the first loop, I go v1.size. So that's the number of vectors inside the big vector. And notice in the second, in the nested loop, I go v1i.size. So that's, that's how many integers are in that particular vector. This is really important. Because, I mean, in this specific case, they're all the same size. But they could be, in a different type of a program, they could be different. So it's, it's good to use this um, as your limit. And then when you access them, you can just go ij with square brackets. Okay. So this is a common way of doing it. And notice the trick kind of that I, that I call the trick. It's really not a trick. But the, the thing to wrap your head around here is that when I created it, I'm actually creating v2 f uh, new every time. I'm, I'm, I'm recreating v2 every time I go through this for i loop. So I, I declare it here. I as, as push back things into v2, and then I push back that into, once the v2 is finished, I push it back into v1. That's the, that's the construct I'm using to create my two-dimensional vector. This isn't the only way that it can be done. For example, um, here is a different way in which you can do it. So if I scroll down to here, Let's take a look at how this works. So in this situation here, again, I'm creating a 2D vector called v1. But notice now, instead of just declaring it, I'm also specifying its size. And I'm also specifying, remember what the second uh, argument is after the comma. That is the initialization. So that means I'm initializing these three vectors with vector int. And now it's like 
an initialization inside of an initialization, and I'm saying all those guys should have a size of 4. Now notice I haven't specified a value. I could, I could just go comma here with a 4 and a 0. And I, could, I could do something like that. Um, but I don't want them to all be the same value. So in this case, essentially, I don't need to use pushback because I've already allocated all the space I need in this initialization line. So I, I've said I want three vectors inside V1, and those vectors should be initialized to vectors of integers with size 4. Now they have, they're not initialized, but the, at least the size is set. What I mean is the integer values are not set, but the size of them is set, so I don't need to use pushback. So if we go into the loop now, notice here, I've, I've gone into the double loop just as I did before. However, now I'm assigning instead of pushing back. And once again, in order to print them out, I use the same code. So the, the, the printing out code is the same, but the way I created them is different. Just because up here, I didn't, I just created this one just by declaring it with, with no, um, no size or anything specified. Whereas here, I haven't initialized the, the, the integers, but I have set the size of both the uh, big vector and the, the size of the uh, internal vectors. And that's why, as I mentioned, I can get away with just, a, use, just using assignment here. OK. OK, so the next kind of little mini assignment I have is create a 2D vector of 10 by 10 integers from 10 to 99 and print them out. And here's the solution. So essentially, this is very, very similar to what we just did, except now we are going to be creating a random number. Remember, this, there's two methods of creating random numbers here. I've commented one out. The bottom one is better because it doesn't just use the low uh, order bits. Uh, this one is, if you, if you go look up C++ random number best practices, both of these will work, but the bottom one is a better solution mathematically. Um, in any case, my point here is not teaching random numbers. I want to teach you guys about vectors. Notice, this, and also right here, this is seeding the random number generator. Here's my, I've actually separated out the printing function, and I'm using more modern uh, for auto. Notice this for loop doesn't have a uh, braces because it's only one line. If I, if I needed more lines, I'd have to put in braces for that for loop. And here, I'm setting the size of both V, which is my big vector, and A, which is my little vector, which goes inside. And so what I'm doing here is I'm setting A, J, as the random number, and then I'm assigning, once A is finished in this inside loop, I'm assigning A to VI because I is the index of the outside uh, loop. And so once, <coughs> once this is finished, I print my, my matrix. And if I run this, it looks like, like that. So my smallest number is going to be 10, and my biggest number is going to be 99. And that looks nice because everything's two digits. OK? So here's my code again.
Now, there is another way of doing this. Okay, there is another way of doing this. And let me show you how that works. And in, in that method, I'll use pushback instead of assigning. Okay, so here's the code that I have written to do the same thing in a slightly different way on the left. So my old code, you can see here, that I just went over uh, is on the Oops, this is highlighting everything. So it's on the right. But I mentioned that I was going to do it in a slightly different way, and I am. So here on the left, I have line 44. I'm creating vector, but unlike before, where I'm actually initializing the size, uh, I'm, I'm not initializing the size. I'm just declaring a vector. Now then what I do is I also don't declare uh, uh, an, an inside vector as I did before. I declare nothing at this point. I go into my loop and now of course you can see that my loop limit is hard coded to 10 and I that's different from the before, right? Because before it was uh, uh, v dot size. Now I create the vector a, the internal one, inside the loop, the first loop. And then in my nested loop, I create the random number here. And I push that back into a. So. It's just a different paradigm of doing things. Both ways will work. In the, in the version on the right, I use assignment. On the version on the left, I'm using pushback into A. Now, once this inside loop is finished, then I push back A into V. And it's nice because now every time I go into this outside loop, I recreate A because it goes out of scope. Right? It's only going to be live inside the for loop. So once I'm finished making it, I push it back into V. Whereas here on the right hand side, I did it in a slightly different way where I assign A to VI. Because at this point, all the elements of V already, uh, their size is set. So, you know, different ways of doing the same thing. Uh, you can use whichever way you feel more comfortable with or the way or either one that you feel is more intuitive. In any case, um, he, on this left program, I have more because my purpose of this program wasn't just to create the, the random uh, vectors with, filled with random numbers, but rather to sort them based on the sum of the rows. So here, I'm calling the sort algorithm. Now the sort algorithm obviously I have to include algorithm in my, uh, at the top of my program but also here I'm using a custom comparison called my comp and so let's scroll up now to see how that works. Left a little space here so that I could show you the code unobstructed. So the two uh, print, oops, sorry, let me try that again. So the two, uh, the two print, you can see the two prints are basically identical, except here I'm also calculating the sum of the rows and printing that out. Now, I also have another function which returns a bool, right? This is my comparison function for the sort algorithm. And what this the way this works, let me just explain this for a moment. The way this function works is the sort algorithm in here that's built into C++, right? Because I'm calling sort. And of course, as I mentioned, I have to inclu include algorithm for that to work. But that's probably going to be using, I think it uses a quick sort. Uh, algorithm to do that. However, 
you need a less than operator in order for the sort to work. So what I've done in this function is I am providing the comparison between two items that this vector contains. Remember, what does the vector v, which is the vector that's going to be sorted, what does v contain? Well, it contains a vector of integers. So therefore, I pass two vectors of integers, const, because I'm not going to change them. First one's x, the second one's y. Now, I go into this function and I initialize two variables to 0, which are going to be the sums of those vectors. And I appropriately go into a for loop for each one, going into the size of x and the size of y, and go ahead and calculate the sum of that internal vector. Then, now, and this is the crucial part, I return the sum of the first argument less than the sum of the second argument. Right? So sum y is less than sum, sorry, sum x is less than sum y. Whatever that is, whether it's true or false, that is what sort is going to use to sort the matrix. And what this provides is uh, ascending order, right? So the smallest one will come first, and the larger ones will come later. So here, essentially, by writing this function that returns a bool, I can now use the third argument in sort, and there it is. I'm using my compare or my comp. And when I run this now, you can see what happens that initially I print out the matrix or you know the, the 2D vector with the rows unsorted. Notice here is the sum of the rows that's being printed. By the way, once again, just wanted to point out that's actually being printed out in the print right there. Okay, so I'm calculating it here and then I'm printing it out right there on line 18. But once again, the I run this every time I'm gonna get different numbers but you can see that these sums are definitely not in order right the biggest one I think is like 7 724 so that one is gonna come as the last one here and the smallest one being 395 that's gonna come as the first one so you can see it's working properly and just to verify right the numbers for 395 goes 25 15 13 right 25, 15, 13, that's right. And for the biggest one, 7, uh, 24, it's 99, 60, 74, 99, 60, 74. So it is working properly. So if we look at the code once again, I'm able to achieve this simply by writing this one extra function called myComp. It's a really neat feature, but um, most importantly here is I want for, for students to get uh, comfortable with creating and passing and dealing with vectors. And that was the purpose of this uh, example. So uh, we'll see you next time.